Next up, we have Fabian Schotto from Ada Core, as well as Pierre Salvan from Microchip, talking about, well, Ada on Polarfire SOC. Very exciting. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm Fabien Schotto from uh, Ada Core. Thank you. And uh, Pierre from uh, Microchip is over here. Uh, so today, we want to present a uh, partnership between Microchip and AdaCore to bring a uh, safe and secure software and hardware solution to the RISC-V ecosystem. Um, yep. So first I will talk about the Polar Fire SOC platform and then uh, the software development tools from AdaCore that you can use to develop uh, on, on this platform. <clears throat> So the Polar Fire SOC uh, is based around the Polar Fire FPGA that we all uh, know and love, uh, in particular for the low power uh, consumption, with a so it's combined with a, with a Risk Five uh, soft uh, system and chip. Uh, the system and chip itself is based on uh, heterogeneous uh, architecture, uh, so there is uh, four. Uh, high-performance Linux-capable Linux uh, cores and uh, uh, fifth core, monitor core, better suited for uh, safety-critical uh, application if, uh, if need be. Um, one of the interesting uh, property of this uh, platform is the uh, deterministic uh, execution that you can achieve with the uh, configuration of the caches and uh, branch prediction. Uh, and of course, this is very important for safety critical applications where you need uh, worst case ex execution time analysis, schedulability analysis, and of course, you want to achieve um, a reliable uh, real time deterministic uh, behavior. <clears throat> so I know that maybe software development is not the uh, favorite topic over here. Uh, but uh, when, you know, what's the point of having the best RISC-V implementation if you or your user cannot program uh, good software for it? Um, and also, probably, for most of you, software programming means only C and C++, and you're like, well, you know, I'm, I'm fine with C and C++, it's okay. Uh, and you maybe don't even consider changing the language as, as being an option. Uh, so I'm not here to talk about the Stockholm Syndrome, right? Uh, so, what I'm going to do is try to present uh, alternative programming language and what you can get uh, from them. So, this is all of the questions that you should ask yourself when actually uh, choosing uh, a programming language, and there are alternatives out there. Um, today, I'm going to talk about two programming languages, uh, ADA and Spark. Spark is a subset of ADA for formal verification. I will come back to that uh, later. Uh, these are the two uh, uh, programming languages that, uh, that we support at, uh, at ADA Core. <coughs> so, uh, what, what can you get uh, with, when using different uh, programming languages, and in particular with ADA? So, this is just a simple uh, C example of an API. Uh, and so, as we can see, this is already a pretty advanced uh, C developer because there's the use of typedef here. Uh, but we see we have to use pointers. Probably, probably this value will be changed, or the value pointing, but it's, it's not really clear. Uh, so let's see now uh, what, what we can write with Ada, and this is to show um, how in ADA you can have a lot of specification power for your application. So the developer can really express what is really uh, uh, expected from the application. So ADA being a strongly typed language, uh, it's actually not only strongly typed, there's also a lot of uh, features to, to define your own type. And so for instance here, we are defining a floating point type. Uh, we say that we expect at least 17 digits of precision and we specify a range. Uh, so typically, this would come from uh, if you're using a temperature sensor, the sensor has a, a working range, and you can express that uh, in your application, which is important because if there's a value outside that range, it means there's a problem, and you have to, uh, to, to fix this problem. Um, 
this is the high level view, but the compiler will actually uh, pick the best uh, hardware representation uh, depending on the architecture, of course. Um, we can see here as well that uh, instead of using a pointer here, we just specify that the, the parameter t is an, is an output, so it's going to be changed by the, the subprogram. Uh, and this is one way in which uh, in ADA you use uh, a, a lot less pointers that you would in, in C or C++. <clears throat> so another property of ADA is that you have to uh, specify what you really uh, mean and what you really want. Uh, so again, reading just this line here, um, probably in C you won't, don't know exactly what the, what the, what the developer is, is really, uh, uh, really wants to do. Is it, a, is it a floating point division or is it an integer division? In ADA you would have to decide and specify. So either you, you cast uh, B to an integer and this is going to be an integer division, or you cast A to float uh, and this is going to be a floating point division. So there is no uh, undefined behavior, there is no guessing here. Everything has to be uh, explicit. <clears throat> and so, um, to sum up the, some of the best properties, of course, explaining ADA in just uh, 12 minutes or 15 minutes is an impossible task. Um, I guess what you can remember is that the, the intent here is to really catch what the developers uh, wants to do and to have a lot of uh, um, specification power uh, in the language. Um, what the specification power brings is that you actually communicate what you want to uh, different actors in the software development process. You communicate better with the, the other programmers that will maintain the code in, uh, in a week, in a month, uh, in 20 years or whatever. You communicate better with the compiler that will be able to do optimizations, that will be able to select the right uh, hardware representation for your types. And uh, you also <coughs> can use this, this uh, specification during your uh, testing campaign. And last but not least, all those uh, information specification are useful for the static analysis and formal verification that I will explain later um, to perform a, a better and more accurate uh, analysis of your, of your application. So, um, Going back to Spark, uh, Spark with a K is a subset of the ADA language that is designed for formal verification. So actually it's a language and also uh, a suite of tools that perform the uh, automatic uh, formal proof on, on, your, on your application. <coughs> so just one example of what you can get from, from Spark. So this is the very the, the, the first level, the low level of what you can get. You get the uh, proof of absence of runtime error. So, for example, for example, that means um, no division by zero, no out of bound uh, in array index or so buffer overflows, uh, no uh, overflows on integers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, which is already quite powerful. Uh, so, for instance, in a, in a security context, if we say, okay, I have a proof that there is no buffer overflow in my application, uh, this is already a very, very strong property. Um, you can also, with, uh, with Spark, um, uh, do uh, programming by contract. Uh, so for instance, here we have an access to an array, uh, and usually in, in defensive code, you would check if the uh, index is within the range of the array. So that, that's, that's the ADA syntax, but more or less it's saying, okay, is the index within the range of my array? With Spark, you export that constraint uh, to the user of the API with a precondition, uh, and, and the uh, formal verification framework will prove that there is no uh, instance of this happening, so that the property is always verified, which means you can remove the check uh, at execution here and actually ach achieve better performances. <clears throat> and so the, let's say, the highest level that you can achieve with uh, Spark and formal verification is to prove the functional properties uh, of your software. And so here we define uh, just, just a function to find the index of, uh, of a value in an array. And so here we clearly have uh, expressed in, in the programming language itself uh, the requirement for this function. So basically it says if the, if the value is not 
uh, in the array, then we return minus one. Otherwise, we return an index that uh, the index of the value in the array. And this uh, Spark will also give you a mathematical proof that the implementation of this subprogram uh, respects the, the specification. <clears throat> okay, so last point. This is different than the, the formal verification, but another uh, interesting uh, feature of, uh, of ADA. Uh, so there is, in the ADA language, ADA and Spark languages, there is uh, the notion of task that is built in, in the language. So task or threads or uh, lightweight process. Uh, this is really uh, fully integrated and part of the language. And there is uh, a profile within this tasking, it's called the Raven's car, which is made for real-time uh, safety critical application. Uh, and so this, is, this can be used uh, in different ways. You can use it on Linux, on Windows. You can also use it on real-time operating systems such as uh, VxWorks, for instance. Um, we support all that. And we also have uh, a small uh, <coughs> lightweight runtime uh, that actually implements this uh, tasking feature uh, on bare metal. And for instance, so if you go to our table outside, we have a demonstration of uh, using this Ravenscar uh, tasking on the uh, uh, Sci-5 Unleashed, which is um, the, 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 yeah, the SOC that you will find in the, in the Polar Fire SOC. Um, and so, yeah, to finish, so uh, we are bringing the two, the hardware and, and, and software solutions for, for, uh, for safety critical uh, application in the uh, in the uh, risk 5 uh, ecosystem and uh, so I didn't talk a lot about I, I talked about languages a lot uh, not a lot about the company Adecor so we do uh, software development tools so we support the Ada and Spark languages with compilers IDE formal verification static analysis code coverage etc etc and yeah that's it for me <laughs> <laughs>